Welcome to the Emmanuel's Faith Center broadcast with Pastor Wayne Johnson. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and the Bible said, addeth no what? Sorrow. It didn't say blessings with an I-N-G-S on it. It said the blessing. So when I understand what the blessing is, it'll cause supernatural increase and in wealth to come into my hands, glory to God. Our church is located at 9501 Highway 97, Walnut Hill, Florida. We invite you to stay tuned. Hallelujah. The it's word coming through the, the, the wealth supply that God has for it in his kingdom. Hallelujah. The wind will start blowing in your life. But you need to understand, just because it's blowing, don't mean that the Lord is not with me. The wind will start blowing in your life when God starts to give you an instruction. And all of a sudden, the roar of the wind and the results of the wave, sometimes life will, will come to you in that capacity. It'll make a loud sound and it'll begin to toss you to and fro, glory to God. Because of the natural ingredients of life. And that's why I want to throw you a lifeline today, glory to God. Sometimes in the, hallelujah, we understand that life don't always fight fair. It's, it's inconsiderate sometimes of our feeling and our passion and our love for, for things and what we're trying to accomplish in life. But I want to let you know today that we serve a God and his name is Jesus. That he's awesome in power. Hallelujah. And guess what? My first sign that fell down is fear. The Bible says fear not. And think it not strange when these fiery trials come to try your faith. Glory to God. And so I'm Jesus sometimes, he said, he'll turn off the winds of life. He'll turn off the things that cause us to stumble and fall. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But I just want to let you know, not yet. We, we, got, we, got, we, got, we got a marvelous praise. We got a, we got a marvelous couple of our young people doing a skit today for us. And we thank God for them. Hallelujah. Because they're going to illustrate some things in the lifeline of Jesus Christ that if you just trust God. Hallelujah. Even though the wind may blow. But you know what? Jesus always cut it off. And just like I walked over there and cut off that natural switch, hallelujah, and the fan stopped. Hallelujah. If you just give your life to him sometime. Ah, uh, listen to what I got to tell you. Listen, 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 listen. If you got your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 6, verse 47. Amen. Praise the Lord. No, let me read. Let me read Mark. Uh, go, go there in Luke. But I want to read Mark, uh, the sixth chapter, starting at verse forty-five, down to. Uh, I'm gonna read a few verses of that because I want to set a stage. Listen to what it said. He said straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship, and to go to the, what the other side, unto Beth, unto Bethsaida, while he what sent away the people, and when he had sent them away, he departed unto a mountain to pray. And when the eve was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on land. And he saw them, listen to what this, listen to what he said. Listen to what I said, hallelujah. And he saw them toiling and roaring, for the wind was contrary unto them, and uh, hallelujah, and about what, the fourth watch of the night, and he, he cometh unto them walking upon the sea. And would not, and would have what passed them by. Would have passed them by. But when he saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been what a spirit, and cried out. And they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he what he talked with them and said unto them, Be of good cheer, for it is, I said, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Lord have mercy. And he said he saw them in their toil. He saw them in their trouble. And so God is bringing us a lifeline today. But we know we have some enemies that we deal with. We got fear. We got worry. And we got doubt. And we got what? Financial burdens. But I want to leave you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But now I want you to turn to Luke 6, 47 and 48. I want to read that. 
Amen. Luke, the sixth chapter, verse 46 to 48. And why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I can say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show to you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built his house and dig deep and, de- and, what? and dug or dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the floods arose and the streams beat vermily upon that house, it could not be shaken, for it was what? founded upon a rock. I'm going to read a couple more verses. And he that heareth and doeth and doeth not is likened unto a man without a foundation, built in house upon the earth, against which the streams did beat vermily, and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. And the ruin of that house was great. But I want to let you know today, the Lord opened up in Scripture and he revealed two kinds of men. Glory to God. If you just begin to understand this morning, that through the word, when we begin to see ourselves as victorious and not what people of despair. And so we want to put a lifeline out to you today. And we're going to ask Sister Portia and, 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 uh, and, and I forgot her name. <laughs> Kill. Come on up and do our little skit today. We're going to do the first one on fear. We're going to do the first one on fear. Come, on, come up on the pulpit. Y'all do it up here. And see, sometimes, and sometimes in life, God want to give us a word. But sometimes we are fearful and don't want to obey what thus said the Lord. Hallelujah. Because why? In obeying God, it causes for us to what, want to do some things. That's a little bit of fear. Y'all need to show some more fear. We got some more fear. Come on up, do some more fear. I mean, because at night, people stay up all night worried. They're fearful about all types of things. Glory to God. But, but, but come on up and do a little bit more fear. I, I mean, because when I'm fearful, man, I'm like, you know, I don't know. What's going to happen? You know, and when you're fearful, natural fearful, you know, when you're fearful about something, you know, you, you, you worry. You're stressed out. But you know what? The Lord said, I'm going to give you a lifeline. If you hold on to this line right here, and he'll give it to you in the midst of your fear. And God has said, he said, if you trust in me. See, when the winds begin to blow against your life and they're trying to make you not understand who you are in Christ, and all the benefits that God has given you. It'll try to take this rope out of your hand. But he said, hold on to my what, unchanging hand, glory to God. This lifeline is Jesus Christ. And if you hold on, the fear of this world and the, and the turmoils of life won't overtake you, glory be to God. Because what we are able to remove it by the what, word, glory to God. And when we begin to see that God is able and he can do exceedingly abundantly above, we can remove fear from our life. Because why? We keep holding on to the unchangeableness of God. And life is going to pull on you now. It's going to try to pull you off of your position, glory to God. It's going to try to pull you away. The devil is going to say, fear, I come to attack you, glory to God. He's going to snatch you a little bit. But you got to know, glory to God. Sometimes you got to hold on with two hands. See, some people get a little weak and, and they, they need to hold on with two hands, glory to God. And Jesus is saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy and heavy and wounded in your spirit, and I'll give you rest. And I'll move the fear that, that's come to torment you. And I'll command it to go. If you only trust in me. The lifeline of Jesus Christ. Concerning the word. And many times God is trying to feed us with the word. And the main thing that we need to be eating. We don't want glory to God. Because why? We live in a microwave society. Glory to God. But I come to tell you. Don't let adversity pull you. But if you follow Jesus. If you keep following this lifeline, see this lifeline will lead you somewhere. It'll bring you into a victorious life in Christ. But see, adversity is going to say, don't follow me. But if you follow the lifeline, 
or as we say, if you follow the yellow brick road, you will make it to your destination, glory to God. And God will lead you, what? Into green pastures, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, we got another obstacle called worry. Now, some of us, including myself, some of us got a PhD in worry. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we got a PhD, right, in worry about things. We worry so much our stomach get all upset and everything. But we're going to let our, our, our participants today show us about worry. Give us an illustration of how you see people worry that you know. Y'all come on up and illustrate worry. Because I know you see mama and daddy, you see, sometimes you may even see me worry a little bit. Glory to God. Worry. <laughs> Camera in, shoot him. She said, Lord, help me. And sometimes we like that, we cry. We, we're worried. He, he's on it. We're so worried about what we're trying to do in life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're so worried about things that we're trying to do. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And what, what are you saying? You're saying, Lord, I don't know how we're going to pay these bills. I don't know how I'm going to make it. But you know what? God always sends you an answer. And when he sends you an answer, sometimes it doesn't even look like an answer, does it? He'll throw you the lifeline of life. And he'll begin to reach out to you, glory to God, because he see you in your midnight hour. He see you through the tars, glory to God. Don't you know when he told the disciples to get in the ship and go to the other side, when we read his scripture, what did he say? He said he saw them tarly. He saw the winds that were boisterous and contrary to them. Don't you know if he could see that and the disciples were in the midst of the boat going to the other side, don't you know he can see you? But I come to tell you, glory to God. And sometimes the Spirit of God will come and he'll touch you in the midnight hour. And he said, my daughter, come unto me, all ye that heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And he'll throw out a lifeline, just like we did a while ago. He said, now, if you partake of me, if you would understand that I am the way, the truth, and the life, if you focus on me, like you focus on your worry. God said, I'm able to bring you out. I'm able to deliver you. I'm able to what? Break the yoke of bondage in your life. I'm able to what? To deliver you. Because why? Fear is saying, fear is saying, don't trust God. Fear is saying, get in a place where you have no hope. Fear is saying, I come to consume your mind, glory to God. But I come to tell you, worry is a what? Spirit. And that spirit must what? Bow at the name of Jesus. And I come to tell you, God has given us power. Now, what should have been your prayer, sir? Lord, I thank you that you're going to make a way out of nowhere. I don't know how to do it, but I know that you told me. If I just hearken unto the voice of your word, if I built my life and in in, 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 in all that I do upon the foundation of your word, that none of these things would come upon me. They would form, but they would, won't prosper, glory to God. Ah, yes, ah, I'm going through a midnight hour, but I know uh, it's not going to rain always in my life. Joy cometh in the morning. And I know some way or somehow you're going to what? Speak. And somebody is going to be able to assist me in what I'm trying to do. Glory to God. Because you are the lifeline that I partake of in what? Troubled time. And he said, what? Think it not strange. When fiery trials come to test you and to try you. For the knowing that the trial of your faith what, worketh patient. For you have needed of patience after you have what? Done the perfect will of God. 
You know, in my life, I always thought it was strange when the fiery trials come to test me, to try me, to test my faith. But you know what? I heard a sermon the other day, and know what the man of God said? This is a perfect, see, when you were down there worrying about your problem, it was a perfect time and situation for me to what? Trust in the almighty God and to let his word work in my situation. It was an honor. See, when you look at it as being an honor when trouble comes to what? Believe God's word and speak God's word and, and the trust and the economic times that you're going through, glory to God. It's an honor and a privilege, glory to God, to be able to speak God's word and be able to have an opportunity to release my faith that my enemy of fear and worry can what be destroyed in my life, glory to God. But when I think it's strange because of the fiery trials that's coming to test me and to try my faith, because why? Why? The word brought me here. If the word brought me here, the word can carry me on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And why are we thinking this strange that when trouble comes my way? But when I choose to speak and believe God's word. See, trouble going to try to pull you off your stance. Glory to God. But if you're not, if you don't have a good, mm, just don't hold this rope correctly when trouble comes. It'll snatch it out of your hands. Glory to God. And sometimes we are so fearful about tomorrow. And God is saying, if you worship me, worship means the Syrophoenician woman, her daughter had a demon, and she went looking for Jesus because the answer was in the kingdom. It was with Jesus. She had a problem she couldn't solve. But I come to tell you, an opposition was on every hand. What did she say? She didn't give up. She counted a privilege and an honor because she didn't come from the right house, the right tribe, the right people, glory to God. And when she what? Worship him. And the Did you get that? When she worshiped Jesus, his demeanor changed. And he began to speak a word. He began to tell her, Thy faith has what? Open the door that the demon is going out of your door. And your circumstance and your situation has changed. A church, glory to God. This is the lifeline. Jesus has given us the lifeline. And it's up to us to hold it with one hand or hold it with two. And I come to tell you, I need to hold it with both of my hands, glory to God. Because why? I know that if I continually keep holding on, y'all not y'all happy about this thing? Glory to God. I, I'm, I'm preaching, but y'all ain't like y'all, y'all, y'all scared. Yeah, ain't like y'all not joyful, glory to God. Because why? Hallelujah. Baby got a pair of shoes and a light bill do, but God said, I'm gonna bless you, glory to God. Amen. And so we're joyful about it. Lord have mercy. Because of the lifeline of Jesus Christ. Now, we got another one, doubt. The Bible says, he that builds his house upon the foundation, they dug deep to build their life upon the foundation. Lord have mercy. And sometimes you got to dig deep. And trouble is knocking on your door every step of the way. Hey? And so when people come to you, show me how y'all doubt. Give me a face of doubt. Oh, there you go. Give me a face of doubt, take care. Face of doubt. Don't believe nothing you say. Don't believe nothing you say. And we know doubt has come. But you know what? If you don't let go, See, people let go up here more so than they let go here. Now, the last one that we have is the financial burden. The economy is bad. Everybody can relate to that one, can't you? Everybody can relate to that one. See, I'm not going to let this lifeline go because listen to what, listen to, listen to what this is said. This is not what it said. The question is, what foundation are you building are you building on? Jesus has shown us that the way to build your life on the solid rock is by what doing God's word. It is not enough just to hear the word. You have to what do what it says. You have to act on it irrespectively of your feelings or your circumstance. You have to do that irrespectively of what you feel and what you are going through. But that takes training, don't it? 
That takes diligence. See, because when they get lax, I start to snatch this rope out of their hand while they was over there listening at me talking. That's why the enemy will do it. See, it's like a street fight. They'll sneak up behind you, hit you in the head with a brick. They'll knock you out. They'll shoot you. They'll cut you. They'll stab you. They'll do everything they can to kill you. But you got to know one thing. You must what? Not look at where you are in life, but look at what Jesus Christ can do. That way, you will build your life upon the rock. Thus, no negative force or circumstance can prevail against you. When the floods of fear, sickness, lack, and won't beat upon you, you will what? remain standing in all of the trouble that you go through in life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then you can what? Rejoice. And you can say hallelujah. Let go. Let go of Jesus. Because what? You want to rejoice now. You say hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for blessing me. Y'all want to thank God for blessing you? For understanding that he brought you out of fear, worry, debt, and all of these things. Glory to God. We thank God for y'all coming up. Amen. I know it probably wasn't the best skit that we ever done, but do you get my point? Do you get my point? Amen. Amen. <laughs> now, we got two of the same thing. We got a financial burden and we got worry. They both kind of go together, don't we? But you know, worry is a process. And when God begins to bring us out, it takes time for us to change our minds about what we're going through. Amen, praise the Lord. How many are glad about it? That Jesus is what? The lifeline. That if you hold on to him, regardless of where you go through in life, you're going to be all right. Amen, praise the Lord. And if you understand that, that he's the lifeline. And sometimes you got to dig deep. And what's the best place that you need to be in when trouble comes? What do I need to do when trouble comes? The thing that I don't want to do is, I don't really, what I need to do is when trouble comes, I need to come to the house of God. I need to constantly keep hearing the word, right? So if I don't have the, the necessary tools I need to dig deep when trouble comes, the storms of life is going to what? Overrun me, right? The storm of lack, the storm of all these storms coming my way. The Bible said beat upon both of the houses. The one that's built upon the rock and the one that didn't have no foundation. And so if I don't have the spiritual weapons that I need, and what is my spiritual weapon? The word, right? I pull out of my arsenal and I begin to what? Press play. I begin to say, Lord, you are worthy. And I surrender my life to you. I worship you. And sometimes in the midst of all you're going through, Sometimes you got to just fall down. Sometimes you got to fall down in the midst of you, what you're going through. And say, Lord, I worship you. I worship you in the beauty of holiness. And I just want to let you know, I humbly submit myself, as the Syrophoenician woman did. And Lord, I worship you. I know I don't understand it. I worship you. I humbly submit myself and I fall down, hallelujah, at the Ramu Rabaka. And I worship you this morning. I worship you in the midst of my pain, in the midst of my agony. I understand that you are the all sufficient God. And besides thee, there is none other. And I can do nothing of myself, but I worship you, O oh God. I worship you in the pain and agony that I'm going through because why? You are greater than my pain. You are greater than my fear. You are greater than my worry. And you are greater than my disappointments. And when I begin to take a moment out of who I am and what has come against me and turn to Jesus in the midst of that pain and I, I worship you. Because Lord, I'm digging deep because I need something deeper than me. I need something stronger than me, glory to God. And I know you won't let me go because you are a lifeline that's sufficient enough to deliver me and to carry me to the other side. You gave the commandment and you see me in my tall, but God is saying, what are you going to do in the midst of your pain? 
or you're going to realize that I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I am the deliverer. Martha and Mary said, Lord, if you only had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus said, Hallelujah, do you not understand? I am the resurrection. I am the life. Even though he is dead right now, I'll bring it back alive. And sometimes we're living in dead situations because we made the wrong choices. Sometimes we're living in a situation and a circumstance that come upon us and we didn't have nothing to do with it. But I come to tell you, you ought to count it all joy. You ought to take a minute and say, Lord, I by faith count it all joy going through the fiery trials and the mess that I'm in, glory to God. Ah, ah, if I was a smart man or a smart woman, I would have saw it coming, but I was foolish. But I know that you are God the same. And if you, by your mercy and by your grace, would have mercy upon me and look upon my affliction at this time, and you would come down and visit me in the midst of my pain. If only you can heal a broken heart. Only you can mend a messed up marriage. Only you can what, save a wayward child. Only you can speak to the king and turn his heart as he turned the creeks in the river. Only you can what, straighten out trouble in my life. But you know what? Every time I got into trouble and trouble, you know, I always start, I used to look at the, the other person, but then I start looking at me. <laughs> Lord, God Almighty, but when you understand that, the lifeline of Jesus Christ, he'll bring you out of financial burden. He'll remove worry from your life. Because in the midst of your pain, you understand that it's the word that will bring you out. Now you just can't come hear the word. You got to be a doer of the word. He that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him as unto a what? A wise man or a wise woman. And let me tell you something. Then you begin to go through the process. It's a process of coming out. Immediately God confirms his, he, that he heard your prayer and the burden is lifted. But then the process of holding on to the lifeline. The process of holding on to the unchangeable hand. This has been the Emmanuel's Faith Center broadcast with Pastor Wayne Johnson. If this broadcast was a blessing to you, we would like for you to partner with us. You can partner with us with the monthly seed of $25. We are located at 9501 Highway 97, Walnut Hill, Florida. For this and other teachings by Pastor Johnson, please visit our website at www.efcenter.org. Tune in next week for another exciting time in the Word of God. And may God continue to richly bless your lives is our prayer.